I'm very much into doing things myself, which may make me seem a bit weird at times to my friends. And the topic in this video may be well, definitely one of those times. But raising this secret ingredient that you can add to your chicken's diet is pretty darn easy. And it'll help you raise healthy, happy chickens without breaking the bank. Hey y'all, I'm Renee and welcome to Tater Town. We all know that chickens are omnivores and they need a balanced diet to thrive. This includes protein, so I want to talk with you about one of my chicken's favorite snacks, mealworms. Now if you have chickens, I'm sure you're already feeding them these tasty little treats or maybe some soldier fly grubs. And if you've been to the store or online lately, you know they can be pretty expensive. I mean, it does take a ton of these guys to fill up a bag. So that means that the places that generate these worms need a fair amount of space to grow them. So the cost does make sense to me. I'm also one of those people that like to know exactly where my chicken's food is coming from. And since mealworms will eat just about anything, including plastic and styrofoam, I like to make sure that the ones I'm feeding my chickens are not ingesting anything other than plant material. So I really am picky about sourcing them. Uh, the only commercially available product that I'm okay with using so far uh, is scratch and peck scrubs. And I do use those because according to them, their grubs are raised on clean, traceable food scraps that would otherwise end up in landfills. But as I'm sure you can imagine, they are pricey. And while the cost is justified in my opinion, it still does hurt the pocketbook. So as I was searching for mealworms at an affordable price from a company that I felt was going to provide a clean product, I thought, well, why? Why can't I just raise them myself? And thus I started down the, should I say, wormhole wow. on how to do just that. And you know what? It's actually pretty easy and not very time consuming. It does take some planning and some startup time, but once you get it going, it's definitely not something you need to tend to every day. And the best part is I know that I'm getting the freshest, highest quality mealworms and I know exactly what they're eating. So that gives me some peace of mind. And if you've got most of the setup stuff on hand, there's very little cost to do it. Plus, it's not only fun, but it's highly rewarding. The first thing you want to do, other than first deciding, of course, if you yourself want to go down this road, the first thing you want to do is plan and make your setup. Be sure that you have an area to keep them where it's warm and dark. And they really thrive between 70 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, but if it's a little cooler than that, that's okay. You will need to keep each life stage separate from each other as one stage tends to eat the other. So you'll, you'll want separate containers for the adults, the eggs, the larva or worms, and the pupa. Now, having said that, I guess I should explain a little bit of what a mealworm actually is. Think of it like a butterfly. The pretty flying butterfly lays eggs, which hatch into caterpillars. And as the caterpillars grow, they shed their old skin or molt, you know, like the chickens do. And uh, once they grow big enough, the caterpillar then forms an encasement or pupa, also known as a chrysalis. And inside that chrysalis, the caterpillar is transformed into a butterfly, and then the process starts all over again. Well, that's exactly what's happening with the mealworms. However, these little insects are known as the darkling beetle, and they go through a life cycle identical to the butterfly. The only difference is the adult beetles don't fly, so they're pretty easy to contain. The first thing you're going to need are containers. Uh, you can use pretty much anything, as long as it's the right size. Um, for the amount of worms that you want to raise. I have a separate container uh, for the worms, one for the eggs, and one for the adult beetles with an insert beetle container for the pupa so that the adults don't eat them. I also have a nursery container for the really teeny tiny worms that just hatch, but it's not necessary for you to have a nursery. And though darkling beetles can't fly, they and the worms can crawl. 
So make sure that whatever container you're putting them in, it has slippery sides. Uh, they can't climb up smooth surfaces like plastic, aluminum foil, or glass. But if it's got any kind of texture to it, you will have a jailbreak. The easiest setup is just a few storage containers, but I decided to build a tower to keep everything organized. My husband and I used some scrap wood laying around the farm. I did buy art supply bins, um, and I'll put a link for those in the description below, but you can probably find something similar and definitely cheaper at the dollar store. Just make sure that they're around three inches deep so that your critters have at least two inches of bedding that they can hang out in. I do have window screen on the bottom of the containers that house the beetles, the adults, um, so that their eggs can easily drop or be sifted into the below egg container. Before I continue to the next point, I do want to share some quick lessons I learned from my initial setup. I used instructions from an online site which used containers that had holes everywhere. So I ended up having to glue on some aluminum foil to cover the holes so the worms and beetles couldn't escape. I also had to glue the window screen on the bottom of the adult beetle containers. That took a bunch of time to construct. And then when I found out that the beetles will eventually chew through the screen, I decided I really didn't want to go through that whole ordeal again. So I changed out my containers. I decided to use solid containers to eliminate the foil. But since I needed screen on the bottom of the beetle container, I still had to cut large holes in the bottom um, in a way that would support the screen. And instead of gluing down the foil this time, all I needed to do was get some aluminum HVAC tape. This was way easier. I'm currently using regular window screen, but when I have a little more money saved to spend on it, I will probably upgrade to stainless steel screen, and I'm really hoping they won't chew through that. You're also going to need bedding for them, which also acts as a food source. I use wheat bran specifically for worms. But you can also use rolled oats, either the quick oats or traditional kind. You want to stay away from the harder oats, like whole or steel cut, since it is harder for them to eat. I've used both, and while the oats aren't bad, I find the bran to be much easier to sift through uh, to find the worms and beetles. Uh, the oats tend to make it a little more difficult to get to them. Also, earlier I said that the bran I use is specifically for worms, and here's why. Human grade wheat bran may contain pesticide residues or more likely diatomaceous earth. The reason why they have that added to them is to, to kill any moths or what have you in storage and transport. Bran for worms should not have any of that in it. I mean, the last thing you want is to give these guys food and bedding that contains something that will wipe out them and all your effort. And that brings me to the next item you will probably want to have, and that's a lid or enclosure of some sort. They will need air to breathe, so if you use a lid, uh, you'll want to make sure it has holes, but you'll want to cover those holes or any opening with screen. This is because of moths. Remember earlier when I said that brand may be treated with diatomaceous earth? That's because manufacturers don't want their product to get to you full of pantry moths that have been eating on it while in transit. Ever open a bag of animal feed or even a flower in your pantry to be greeted by flying friends? I have. I did not have anything covering my containers for about a year. And in that time, I became overwhelmed with Indian meal moths. It was a total disaster. It got so bad, I had to tediously redo my entire setup. It was a total mess. It didn't really affect the worms, but man, I had these things flying everywhere around my house. So yeah, definitely be prepared for that possibility if you don't have some sort of covering to keep them out of the bran or oats that they really want to get to. I tried to remedy the problem at first by adding screens to the top of all my containers, uh, the individual containers, but that ended up being a pain. Not only adding the screen was a chore, but having to open each screen when I was working with them, it was very cumbersome. 
So I decided to screen in the entire enclosure. This has been the best solution so far, but I still need to make one more adjustment and that's to the opening in the front. Um, right now, I just have a screen attached with Velcro, uh, but that's also kind of a pain when I open and close it. Um, so at some point, I will make a screen door to simplify the whole process. I really like having access to everything uh, all at once, especially when I'm feeding them and moving one stage, one life stage to another. So I'm trying to make that process as easy as possible. Well, now that you've got your setup and food ready for the worms, let's get those worms. Okay, so how do you get worms? Well, if you're lucky and you know some people that already raise them, see if they can spare some to get you started. Um, since I didn't, uh, I started with 2,000 mealworms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. I had a great experience with them, so I have no problem recommending them. Uh, but there are other farms out there, so check those out too. And you don't have to get 2,000. Um, you can get a smaller or larger amount. That's just what I decided to get. I ordered mine through Amazon, and they arrived a few days later. Be prepared when you open the package because they're typically packed in a bag filled with the worms and newspaper. So open it over a large container or else you're gonna have worms everywhere. I really wish I had a video of this experience when I did it because it was unreal. Those worms were everywhere. So once you get them out of the packaging, go ahead and put them in their container that's already filled with the bran or oat bedding. And uh, the bran should be about one to two inches deep. Uh, now you wait. And I mean, you have to wait. <laughs> this is the hard part. It takes several months to get this whole assembly line going. Uh, you're not gonna wanna feed any of the worms you have to the chickens just yet. You want them to develop into pupa, which are pretty cool looking. I think they look like the xenomorphs from the alien movies. I don't know, what do you think? As you start finding the pupa, move them onto the platform in the container you plan to house the beetles. Now you gotta wait some more. As the beetles emerge, they'll start to, you know, well, do what they do, and you'll start getting eggs. A single female beetle can lay up to 500 eggs in her life, but as with everything in life, you're gonna lose a fair amount to death, uh, the inability to transform from pupa to beetle, malformation, all of it. But it's all worth it when you get that first batch of worms. But don't feed them to your chickens just yet. You really wanna go through about two or three life cycles before you start harvesting them. Uh, you wanna build up enough reserves so you can take a large number of worms out while leaving at least half to continue the process. Now, there's a couple things I haven't mentioned yet. The first is food. You have the bran or oat bedding, but these guys also need water. And while you could put a little cup of water in with them, you'll see that's not exactly the easiest way to get water for them. It's way easier for them to get it from fruits and vegetables. So this is where having food scraps comes into play. Anything you don't wanna eat, give it to the worms. Just make sure it's not moldy because that can make them sick and die. But if it's that piece of cabbage stem you didn't eat or a few pieces of carrots, go ahead and throw it in with them. Just avoid anything that's super wet because you really wanna keep that bedding dry. And wet foods can lead to mold in their bedding and then death in your farm. Uh, I wouldn't give them tomatoes, watermelon, cucumbers, anything that's super juicy. I typically stick with celery, apples, carrots, potatoes, lettuces, things like that. And for me, I feed them no less than twice a week. I will add food when I have scraps, but you need to remove the old stuff before it starts to mold or smell. Um, I have had rotten apple smell take over my worm area when I miss some pieces and you totally don't want that going on in your house. The last thing I wanna go over is maintenance. Now, I do this about twice a week, but on a bad week, I may only get to it once. And this involves sifting out the eggs from the adult container, removing the pupa from the worm containers, and moving them to the adult container, and removing the biggest worms that I plan to feed the chickens. I also remove 
any old food scraps and make sure they have fresh ones. Uh, it doesn't take much time at all if you keep up on it. When you've got your farm up and running, you now have a fantastic source of high quality protein, essential vitamins, and minerals for your chickens. Incorporating them into your chicken's menu gives them a balanced diet that can lead to improved egg production, stronger eggshells, a boosted immune system, improved feather quality, and healthy growth. Plus, chickens absolutely love to taste. What more could you want? Oh yeah, saving money. Well, if you've been raising mealworms for your chickens, or if you've been wanting to, I'd love to hear your thoughts and experiences. Just drop me a line in the comments section. And be sure to check out more of my homesteading videos. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you can see more videos that will help you do those things you never thought you could.